Hello everyone, welcome back to another installment of the Film Me In podcast where this week we're going to film you in. We're going to film you in. What's that? There's two of me. There's two of me. Yes, we're doing a double feature episode. <laughs> that was terrible. It was kind of cringe, Xander. <laughs> it's got the cringe list. I got the ick for myself there. Um, my, yeah. my name's, Big red flag, Xander. My, my name's Xander, the host of the this wonderful show. With me, as always, is um, is my wonderful panel of co-hosts. Um, to one side of me, it's Siwan. Hello. Siwan Wayne. Hello. Yes, got it right. Um, next to them is Alex Young. Hello. And next to them is our wonderful poster boy. It's Mr. Joe Cook. Hello. Uh, how is everyone this week? Tired. Good. Tired. Consistent. <laughs> Great. Um, we're going to start off by uh, by letting some of those feelings out, by uh, telling me a bloody moan. So who's got a moan for me? Who wants to go first? I will go first. Sorry, Alex Joe. will go first. <laughs> no, go on, Alex. Go on. Um, so I am like a huge fan of the Riddler, obviously. You know, I can fix him, you know, kiss kiss, <laughs> love him. Mwah. But everywhere I go does not seem to stock I see his face I see his face it does not seem to stock Riddler merch okay so they'll have Batman merch like the Batman but they'll have like I go to Forbidden Planet and there's like five Selena Kyles still five penguins and like just no Riddler and I'm like why where is my baby girl you know uh, and I found a Riddler keychain today and uh, the shop only accepted cash, and I had no cash on me, so it was like heartbreaking. But yeah, that's my moan. No West stocks Riddler merch, and it sucks. That does suck. That's that's really not. Have you thought of going on like eBay or Amazon? Yeah, but it's more expensive <laughs> online. It's cheaper if you get it in person. It, 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 I always find there's, there's something about buying something in a shop that's it's more, nice. Um, it's nice because you go to the tail with like a box and you're like, oh, I get to open this. Yeah, when I no, get home. I prefer getting yeah. my comics in person, so as well. So here we are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely like that. I love a, uh, I love having something physically there. Mm. It's, a, it's a bit of a rush, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dopamine. Joe, you seem to want to go first, so you can go second. I've got two moans. I've got two moans. Um, Push one it. happened last Thursday, and one happened. Do the today, today one first. Oh, so I went shopping with uh, Siwan, and we got to the checkout, and this woman was like, oh, are you paying with your card? I'm like, yes. But then another one opened, so I went to that one, which is cash and card, and then she was like, no, 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 go to this one. But it was like, I, I get quite embarrassed really easily, so... Apparently I didn't go red, but I felt really hot in that moment, and I was so annoyed, because she embarrassed me in front of everyone. Like... If I'm paying by card, I think I should be allowed to pay at the cash and card bit, not just the card no, bit. No, I agree. You know? It's also yeah. kind of the way she said like, it to you. You Did you yeah. think she was a bit... <laughs> to, like, talking down to me, I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> and as I was, like, like scanning everything, I was just chucking it to the side. Like, like I could see her in the corner of my eye. Absolute... Oh. Women. Am I right? I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yes. bloody bloody women and their bloody job. I don't know. Can't live with no. them. Can't um, find them sometimes. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm drowning. Yes, Andrew. I've got my mum. Yeah, your mum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we Xander's we, mum. We've all. Do you want to say we've hi? We've all got Joe's mum. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, that ticked me off. Don't don't embarrass me in public because I will not. I will be annoyed by it, but I won't tell them that I'm annoyed by it. Um, and then another <laughs> thing which I've told, I've told Xander and Siwan about. So l I like this show called Inside Number Nine. Oh my god! And <laughs> and like ever since the beginning, like quite a few years ago, people were asking, do a bus episode because the, the 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 sort of format of the show is it's an anthology. Um, where each episode is set in a different location in behind a number nine, so there could be like a, a number nine shoe, a number nine uh, train carriage. Um, and yeah, since the beginning, people have asked for the number nine bus, which is sort of the the obvious one you would do. And the the press release came out for the series like in January, saying, "Okay, we've finally done it after eight series. You're getting a bus episode." And I'm like, "Yes, finally! This is going to be really cool." Um, 
because I've been one of those fans that wanted it. So uh, it got to like the day and I woke up I'm like, this is going to be so good. You know, there's no way it could disappoint. I mean, I was messaging C1 beforehand. Like there's no way they could fuck this up. It's sort of the perfect episode for them. It's a pastiche of the old uh, sitcom on the buses. Oh, I love that show. Um, with Reese Shear Smith and Steve Pemberton. And it's going to be so good. There's no way they could fuck it up. <laughs> um, and it it starts. And before before like the title start, there's the BBC announcer going, I'm sorry, we've actually, we're, ha- we're having to show something else due to an unscheduled change in schedule. I'm like, okay. So I kept on watching. And it was one that noticed that free. It was a. They started showing a game show instead with Lee Mack, um, as if it wasn't Inside Number Nine. And see, one worked it out because it was f- called Free by Free. It was still Inside Number Nine, but they were pretending it was a game show. I was waiting the whole time for the bus episode, but it it just didn't happen. I won't spoil the ending, but the whole thing was a game show. It was a basic. It was basically a piss take to the fans saying, "Oh, you wanted that bus episode? Oh, sorry. We took fake pictures. We put fake shots in the trailer. There's no. Sh- there's no script. We didn't film anything. You're not getting a bus episode. You get this quiz episode with Lee Mack. Ha 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 ha. And I am so angry with it. Like I don't get angry at TV, but this really annoyed me. Like I messaged you one going, "I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed." And then later on, I was like, "Actually, I am disappointed and angry. It just. It really annoys me." annoys me so much. I've been let down and they've treated us like shit. My moan follows up from Joe. Oh, does yes. it now? Oh, bless you. Go on. Go My on. moan is that um, I wasn't there to see his reaction in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I was just sat on my bed like I arms crossed. So I am so gutted. I missed his reaction. <laughs> what time? I'm what still time annoyed by it. I'm so at? upset. Ten o'clock. This was at ten p.m. Because wow. I was home last, last week. And the thing. Oh, last oh. week. Oh, yeah. The thing is though, in the in the BBC, like when you go on like the channels to see what's on, it they changed the name from Inside Number Nine to the name of the game show. It was great. It was genius. That's so clever. It was great. I don't want to. I don't want to reveal the ending, because you know it's. No, it was like, genius. It is. It is. That's clever, it is. though. I thought it was clever. But like, I, I feel let down. <laughs> um, I think I need to watch. I said this to you the other day. I should have watched this, and I probably should, because I need to see what what made you so angry. Um, I it, it's it, it's. I think you get more angry if you're aware of like the press release of the pictures and the promises from the creators. And if you have a and then for them and to... if you have a literal number nine on your body. <laughs> Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Well, that is. That sucks. The stinky. Sucks stinky. To suck. Um. Oh. Uh, suck and suck and suck. Um. My moan will be that yesterday I went to the cinema. Shop. Oh, hey. And I saw an old movie that I. My rec- no, I won't recommend it later because I've got another recommendation. I went to see a movie called They Live, which is a John Carpenter oh. classic, hot classic, okay. really, really great movie, uh, fun sci-fi. Anyway, I get in there and um, someone was sat in my seat. It's not something I've had to deal with in a long time. And I said, oh, hi, mate, you're sat in my seat. And he was like, oh, no, sorry, I, th- I thought this was my seat. And I had the ticket in front of me and said, no, this is definitely my seat. He didn't even look at his ticket, didn't even show. He was like, oh, right, yeah, probably is. Get so, and that's when I realised that he'd gotten quite comfortable in this seat. Um, having Already having um, dr- had bought, brought a can with him, drunk the whole can, left that on the in the cup holder, and also taken his shoes off. Ew. You should never do that at a cinema. I'm sorry. Especially when you're not in the it. right seat. <laughs> Hamish does it, and it's one of the reasons. So then, why I don't so then he got them. up, and and just moved down like two chairs, and it's like my brother in Christ. You should have got just sitting you your gone seat. To him. You should have gone to him and been like, "Oh, sorry, I booked, booked those seats as well. You have to." <laughs> you should have. Yeah. I've got more. I've got more people coming. Got more people. Yes. Yeah, sorry. sorry, mate. Yeah, sorry. You have to put your shoes back on just again. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Not weird, weird bloke, weird Donny, just sitting in your seat. Anyway, <laughs> people, right? Mm-hmm. So let's move on to the main topic. This should be a a, a fun episode. It's actually like discussing movies. 
That's crazy that we do that sometimes. Whoa. Um, so, we are going to look at the concept and format of a double feature. Uh, so, to those of you who maybe haven't experienced a double feature, it's where you sit and watch two movies back to back with through either some tenuous link or some uh, you know thematic link. So, it could be that these two movies are romances with ryan gosling so you watch the notebook and la la land very you know that kind of thing it could be as simple as that or it could be something deeper um like you could say in your head canon that this person is the same character as this person because of this and this and the other clues that are in the movie fun things like that so we're gonna look at some of those today um i'm we, we've all got a few of them haven't we yes yes indeed yes um, I don't know which ones to go with, but I actually haven't done any of these, which is a shame. I would have loved to have actually like sat down and watched some of these, uh, but these are ones that I think that in concept could be quite fun. Um, mm. what, 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 how did you guys find this? Because I, I found it quite challenging at first. Yeah, I found it quite challenging, but I, I just started to think of like uh, f- actors or. Uh, themes in films that I enjoyed or, or films that I'd seen recently at least and I was like oh this is like quite similar to this other film that I like yeah yeah that, that's what I do I, I, I resorted to going through my letterbox yeah and seeing mm. like what I've seen oh that um what can I do with that and so that's what I ended up doing with a lot of these go on Joe yeah I, I guess when you're given every movie to think of it's sort of like name your favorite book or you know yeah Little, I don't know. It, it was a tough task. What about you, Suwon? Uh I kind of rushed it this afternoon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, see, you don't tell the teacher that you rushed your homework. I, I mean, okay, I've Siwon, done it, that's though. That's not what you do. I have done it. <laughs> she did do it. She I did do I've it. I think I've got, like, one or two good. She copied it from me at the back of the class, sir. Uh, yeah, copied it from Joe. Um, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> okay, so um, who would like to go first and show off one of their interesting double features? Joe, I think you've got the most. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Alex put the hand up first. I think Alex should. Go on, Alex. No, then. I took the moan first. You go first. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. This is one that you can all try. <laughs> so my double bill okay. is Groundhog Day and Groundhog Day. You suck. <laughs> You're the worst person ever. I really hope that some of these are, like, real. <laughs> <laughs> like Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are. This is, this is the only joke one, but I wanted to get it out there. Um, so, you, you watch the film, and it's, you know, it's about a loop. Oh, sorry, you're you still going to talk about this? Okay, sorry. Oh, Please. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I haven't, the bit hasn't finished yet. <laughs> you watch it. You fi- oh, he's escaped the loop at the end. The credits roll. No, he's back. He's back in the loop. He's got to do it all over again. Like, you theoretically, you could watch Groundhog Day on repeat forever, and he'd never escape that loop. Me waking up and going, going back to sleep. Hmm? I've never <laughs> seen Groundhog again. Day. That's a, that is disgusting. I, know, I want to. Quite frankly. I want to. <laughs> it's an okay film. Happy Death Day is better. Happy Death Day is great. It's got Mil- it's Mil- it's, uh, it's it's got Mil- Murray in it. Um, actually, the best version of this is Palm Springs. I still haven't seen that. Palm Springs is pretty good. Palm Springs is very good. Which one's that? Andy Samberg, man. He's fair. So with Andy Samberg and Kristen Malotti. Actually, Eve of the Daleks with uh, Jodie Whittaker was, was uh, a pretty good time loop episode. Wait, is that, is that the one with <laughs> Selena Gomez or is that a different film? No, it's a different film. Never mind. Never no, mind. that's the... I know, Cut I that know one out. Never mind. Alex. That's Spring Breakers, isn't it? <laughs> do you want to do, yeah. do one? I, yes, I have a really good one actually. So my double bill is the film Chappie, followed by Real Steel. Ooh. Okay, 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 okay. I haven't seen either. Uh, of those. You were, Real Steel's so, great. Hubert Jackman. So obviously a common theme is robots, and then Hugh Jackman. Um, Hubert Jackman. Which is the big theme between these two. So obviously you've got Chappie, 2015 film about an AI police robot who is basically born and he's you know taken on by these uh south african um residents to like and they teach him how to be alive and how to be human and all this kind of stuff 
and it's it's a really really good film and Hugh Jackman's like hunting him down throughout this entire film um it, it's it's heartbreaking I sobbed when I watched this film it's it's so beautiful and it's got a very good soundtrack it's, um, it's Neil Blomkamp isn't yes, it, it is, yes it is yes um that's a good film it's oh. so good I highly recommend it now then it obviously is on to Real Steel which is the film about a boxer who in a in a world where robots box each other it's the story about a boxer that takes his son and and they go on a journey together and it's really sweet they do rock 'em sock 'em robots yup and i great. i don't know i think it's like cool if you think about it if hypothetically i don't know you know Hugh Jackman's character from Chappie was hunting down this robot. Was like, oh damn, it's alive! Robots are actually kind of cool. And then went on into Real Steel to like fight with them and and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. I just thought that the link between the two films of robots and Hugh Jackman was really good, and they're both really good films. What if it's the other way round? Ooh. What if he's in Real Steel and he's very much for robots, and then one of the robots accident, like you said, he has a son. What if after that movie? One of them kills his son. What if the one of them goes rogue, Ooh. kills his son, so then he spends the rest of his life hunting down robots, then leads into Chappie. Wait, Whoa. are they supposed to do a real steel too? There is a real steel too, yeah. yeah, but I haven't seen that. No. Oh, oh has it been already been done? Yeah. Oh. I think huh. it, it sounds naff, but yeah. I haven't seen it, so I can't say. But um, yeah. I mean, technically, Real Steel did come out first in 2011, so that would be correct with that theory. But, you know, wh- whichever way, I just think the two of them are quite good films to watch back-to-back. That's a fun one. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. See one? Have you got one? Um, I'll start with High School Musical going to The Greatest Showman. If you want to have a little bit of Zac Efron having the time of his life, singing his heart out. But, yeah, I don't know. That was the first one I thought of. And then, yeah, maybe Troy. If you want to go deeper into it, maybe Troy. <laughs> yeah, travels. yeah, the time travels. <laughs> he, does, he does time travel. Or, you know, it's one of the parts he got after going to Juilliard. If, the, if there was one person that could do it, it would be Troy Bolton. I mean, it's 17 again. You know, seventeen again. Seventeen what a movie, again. By the way. <laughs> what a movie! I've not seen it. It's a good movie. Um, Matthew Perry's in it. Yeah. Isn't that the one who plays Gavin in Gavin and <laughs> No, that's the guy who plays Chandler in Friends. Oh, oh, but that's Matthew Horn. Oh, nice. Um, my first one. It's a heavy one, right? So you'll have to bear with me here, right? Um, it is The Hunt with Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, leading into Tar with Kate Blanchett, which came out last year, or late last year, early this year. Mm-hmm. No, I haven't so, seen that. So, um, so the hunt is um, it follows Mads Mikkelsen. It's Norwegian, and he is. When I say it's heavy, I mean it's heavy. Um, he's accused of being a paedophile, and we know as an audience that he didn't do it. Whereas the entire movie is spent of these other people convincing you that he is one. And so by the end, you're like, oh, what is it? Like, you know, I really want to trust this guy. But like, is he? Isn't he? Very, very good movie. Also, again, very dark. Uh, so apologies for bringing the tone down slightly from High School Musical and The Greatest Showman. <laughs> um, Tar, however, is it stars Kate Blanchett, who plays one of the most world-renowned... Um, Conductors. Conductors. Thank you. I wave my arms and Joe got it. Um, <laughs> and we know, and she gets accused of doing some terrible things, including like pushing someone to kill themselves, um, gaslighting people, sexual harassment. No, obviously not as bad as being a paedophile. Still not great in this in the world that she's in. Um, whereas in so in this movie. In, in the previous movie, we know he didn't do it, and everyone else is convincing them us that he did. In this movie, we know a hundred percent she did this, 
and the rest of the movie is her convincing us she's completely innocent. She's her, the movie is spent with her trying to gaslight us into believing her and being like, well, she's right. She's she's the good person in this. She's been stitched up completely by all this. Um, so I just thought that would be a really interesting dynamic of movies to go from one where you're following the protagonist and sort of believing him, but then maybe, oh, or is he, or pushing away from that, to then pushing away from a protagonist that tries to reel you back in. Damn. That's amazing. That's really good. I, I think that was better than Groundhog Day in Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. That's a shock. That's um, good that you took the psychological like aspect to like mess with the viewer in this like double viewing, which well, is thank him. I like cool. it. That's nice. Thank you. I'm glad you guys like that one. <laughs> um, who wants to go next? I I could offer up another one. Go on, Joe. Go for right. it. Right. Um. So my next one is The Incredibles and The Lorax. Now, obviously, both are animations. Um, they're not live action, guys. Um, but the connection I'm making here, O'Hare and Edna Mode are siblings. You cannot convince me otherwise. Uh, I c okay, I can. No. They're set in different time periods no, and no, no, universes no, no, no. where no. trees are pink and fluffy and one. No, 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 no. And there so, is a creature called the Lorax. No, no, no. And he I mean, for the trees. Has has the Incredibles ever said that there's not a creature called the Lorax roaming about? And everyone speaks in rhyme. That's like saying, sense. "Oh, you've never seen me and Batman in the same room together." That means I'm not <laughs> Batman. For I wish. So, picture picture X. And one of them has musical numbers. Edna would hundred uh, percent do musical. Edna would sing. No, she would not. <laughs> so, Edna Mode. Too much, darling. Too much. Edna Mode and O'Hare are born. No one wants O'Hare. He's the he's the freak child. So they send him off to this new area, which is a different animation style. As you move through the earth, the animation style changes. And he, like his his parents don't love him. Edna Mode, his sister won't even talk to him. So he's like, okay, what do I do? I'm gonna get back at the world. I'm going to sell people oxygen. I'm going to make money off of that. Which, which is why he's a bad guy. Because his family and Edna Mode just sent him away without caring. And because Edna was cared about, she's had this great upbringing. She's got that mansion. She designed super suits. You know, fits together. And also they've got the same, same hair. <laughs> and they're both tiny people. You cannot say that... You, this is not a strenuous <laughs> connection. This is, this is sol solidified. <laughs> With, with hard evidence and 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 logic. See, I'm looking through mine. I'm like, I don't have any funny ones. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh, this isn't a funny one. This is serious. Okay, Joe. Yeah, Sander, this is serious stuff. Okay. Being abandoned as a child is not funny. Although O'Hare is the villain, it is not his fault that it became that way. Bad upbringing. But you should really get. Well, we don't know that. No, no, we. I, I know that. I, I've seen into the mind of these creators. Okay, so I'll tell Joe to take his meds, and then we'll continue <laughs> onwards. Um, I've got another one. If you guys are okay with me going again? Yeah. Do we not want to talk um, about uh, the, the relationship anymore? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely That's not. That's fair. I'll take that one um, off as done. <laughs> so mine, th this is my funnest one, Okay. Um, this is Promising Young Woman leading into Bo Burnham's Inside. No, I hate Bo Burnham. No. Well, well you're going to love this. Um, so Promising Young Woman is a movie about a woman who sort of goes, who has a, who goes to war against these people who claim to be nice guys and um, then tr like they go away and like sexually assault people and she's um, very much, you know, against that. Like, the rest of the world is. I don't know why I phrased it like that. Um, but yeah, so she's she sort of traps these men and sort of has, like, shouts at them as, like, what are you doing? Think about what you're doing. Um, but he's in a story of revenge because her um, college roommate was sexually assaulted and later killed herself. So she's sort of out for revenge during this movie. Um, she has a boyfriend played by Bo Burnham famous internet comedian 
Um, and he's really good at a rare dramatic role for him. And he's really, really good in this. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to have to spoil the ending, I'm afraid. But I will try and do it with little things as possible. Um, in the end, Bo Burnham is arrested. Or is, it is implied that he is arrested. And so then, it follows into Bo Burnham's inside. Which I am seeing now as, in headcanon, they are the same characters. So now, inside follows a man who is stuck inside a room. Maybe a cell. And is sort of losing his mind and trying to put this, whatever's in his head, out there in some form. And trying to get us, the audience, to like him again. Like he was liked at the start of Promising Your Woman. Okay. What do we think? Why not? Is that a stretch? Why not? No. no. I think it's interesting. Yeah. However, I don't like Bo Burnham's inside, so I will not be watching this. Love you, Kiss Kiss. It's bad, bro. It's boring. You're bad. But the songs it's boring. Good. It's not boring. It the is songs boring. Songs are good. Nah, songs aren't good. The it's songs boring. are good. Songs, songs are, are very good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought that was a fun one. You know, c- crossing over characters. I yeah. Oh, I, s- I saw it and was like. No, okay. it's really imaginative. Like, fair dues, I would have never come up with anything This would like get, that. like, at least ten upvotes on Reddit. Okay. So I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. Oh, I should have done this properly. My my links are very stre- uh, tenuous. <laughs> <laughs> then... oh. Um. Oh, my God. Tina Turner died. What? No. What? Tina Turner's just died. Wait, I what? Thought, no, what? do not. 83. She's just died. Damn. Now we have to carry on with these stupid connections. <laughs> hey, it's not stupid. This is a fun idea. No, it is, but I've done it badly. <laughs> like, you've done it properly, and I'm here with really <laughs> shit ones. Go on, go on, Suwan. You, you right. do another one. I'm going to get rid of my shit ones first. Because I am proud. I'm proud of, like, two, and I'm going to finish with the funniest one last. So this is the next shit one. Is... Love Actually and Maze Runner, right? And the connection is wee little baby Thomas Brody Sangster, right? So, obviously, you know, we all, we all know the scene of him running through the airport, la di da di da love. Great. Yeah. Well, that's that's the practice for that wee little kid. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> the thing with, with the Maze Runner... <laughs> oh, my God. The thing is, so good. they don't remember their childhood. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Like, the only one that remembers technically is Thomas. Newt does not. <laughs> so, is it much of a stretch that his dad is Liam Neeson? <laughs> Do you know what? She's got a point. You may, Like, she's got a point. <laughs> it's so good. Like, it's I know, so good. I know they did that Red Nose Day thing, right? Where they grew up. But take that out of it. For it's all, not canon. Yeah, for all we know, the Earth could have gone to shit, and they took Thomas Brody Sanctus into a maze. For all we know, that's my. That's so good. <laughs> that's my connection. Side note: I think the Maze Runner is really underrated. It is. The maze Runner's great. Movies, those 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 movies are real good. Really I haven't read them because the I'm trying to read the books. Oh, the books are shit compared to the films. Oh. The one <laughs> time I will say that's the one time I will say the books are so much worse because I tried to read the first one and I just couldn't. Never mind. Yeah, D- okay. Dylan o- Dylan O'Brien's a movie star, man. Dude, for sure. He voiced Bumblebee. He was in, in Love and Monsters. Film. It was amazing. He was in Teen Wolf. Dylan O'Brien. If we're naming yeah. things. Wait, he was in Love and Monsters. Sorry, not the Doctor Who episode. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, I thought you meant the, the film. Joe's yeah. rubbing off on you. <laughs> Joe, stop rubbing on me. <laughs> the, on. the film. <laughs> That's a fun one. That's a really fun one. I like that a lot. 
and love actually it might it's probably the best christmas movie it is, it is it is so much better than people give it credit it is love amazing actually, i wouldn't know i don't know if it's so the good. best i'd say maybe home alone 2 nativity is pretty good it's top five mr yeah. poppy can fuck off <coughs> that little good god he's creepy good god watch it again and realize that mr poppy is creepy okay he really is um wh- so i i just gave you guys my uh my double feature about bob burnham and alex threw a fit so yeah. um who's next i w- i will go considering you've just said that <laughs> um so my double feature is going to start off with kill bill volume one and then it's going to be kill bill, kill bill no, volume two i'm lying i'm lying and then it's going to be the gentleman good. by guy ritchie okay two of Spill. my favorite films or you know up there um so obviously kill bill volume one is story about the bride who basically goes and is killing all of the people that helped ruin her wedding and put her in a coma basically um <laughs> is that the plot <laughs> it's kill bill i've not seen i didn't realize that was the plot <laughs> Yeah, that she's an ex assassin cool. and her old assassin friends come to kill her during her wedding and yeah. she gets revenge. That sounds really cool. And she loses her child when it goes into a coma. Damn. So yeah. Dope movie. Good. It's a really good film. Now and then and then um and then afterwards the you've got the gentleman, which is the story about a man with a marijuana empire within London and him trying to sell that business and get out of it. Now, the reason why I paired these two films up together is because I feel like the way that they tell the story is kind of similar. Now, obviously, Kill Bill Volume 1, it's, you know, you don't really know much about what's happening or why the bride is here, why the bride is going to kill these people. You don't know. It's not really revealed until Volume 2. Um... And the fact that you're just watching this woman break into this woman, the other person's house, and like kill her in front of her daughter, and you just don't know why, but you're like, go on, my son, you know, you're like, get it. And I just think, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of good storytelling, and then obviously you learn more as you go forward. Um, compared with the gentleman, where most of the film is told through the perspective of a journalist recounting his information, recounting what he's find found. Um, and I just think the two story, the ways that they tell the story are interesting. And seeing them back to back would be quite interesting. Um, they're both action films. They're both really good films. Um, so yeah, that's just why I paired them up. Both got really fun, like qu- like quick dialogue. Yes. Yeah. Tarantino, obviously, it's his own brand of dialogue. But mm-hmm. um, is it Guy R- Guy Ritchie didn't write The Gentleman, did he? Um. Let me get let me get the end of it. He was the yeah he did yeah yeah he so was he, one of he will, yeah. have, he will have written the um, like snatch as well so it's yeah so it's similar sort of dialogue to that isn't it um, yeah it, it's a different brand but it's also like I like the idea like um, someone t- stories told out of order I I enjoy it I think it's a really good. You know, when you yeah. get to the end of it and you're like, oh, ah. you know, it's like um, with um, Glass Onion. Yeah. That, 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 the storytelling of that one was so interesting. Uh, that movie slaps so It's hard. a really good film. So yeah, that, that's, that's my one. That's a fun one. I like that. That was very good. I need to watch, well, I, I was going to say I need to watch Kill oh. Bill, but Kill Bill, we're, we're going to have to watch for the tournament anyway. Whoa! Spoilers! Oh shit! Ah! Oh. Cut that. We'll we'll Cut watch it. it next week. I tell you what, we'll watch it yeah. next week when I get back. Boom. Okay. Oh, we can't watch it. Right, Sue Ann, hit me with right. your rhythm stick. So, hit me. Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith. Right. 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 So Obi Wan's very bad day. Right. Basically. <laughs> um. Add on to it. Moulin Rouge, which is, which, 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 technically you can add to the Star Wars lore. Now, stay with me. In the Clone Wars, there is a character called Satine, the Duchess of Mandalore, which they failed to mention in both the Mandalorian and Obi-Wan, but we gloss over that. Basically, 
she and Obi-Wan have this um, love story, right? They're all, they're like... Oh, yes, yes, I know this. So, like, they both met each other when they were young, did this whole thing for a year, fell in love, but obviously he's a Jedi and she's a Duchess, and they both know that they can't get together. It's very romantic. Basically, Moulin Rouge, Ewan McGregor's character, is in love with a character called Satine. So, that little connection, you can basically just have a double bill of Ewan McGregor's not having a very good day. So he loses his love, which is the same as Obi-Wan, and then Obi-Wan's very bad day of losing his brother. That is so sad and horrendous, <laughs> and I will watch yeah. that right now. That sounds re- that you've made that sound really fun. Yay! Just, just you and McGregor just getting kicked in the dick. <laughs> yeah, basically. Constantly. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Fun. <laughs> this is so awkward because there's nothing else to say. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, it was a solid one. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> Joseph. Joe. Yeah. You got one first. What? Go on. Go on. Um. Go on, my son. <laughs> Right, I've got I've got a few. Um, I'm gonna go for Toy Story Three. Oh no! And Skinnamarink. Um, what is wrong with you? I don't tolerate well, the latter. I don't tolerate it. You're, you're bringing this up of your own volition. I can't yeah. see it. I can't this see is, it right now. So it doesn't fault. matter. I cannot see it. So it doesn't matter. In your mind, you can. <laughs> Shut up. Um, so. My headcanon is that in Toy Story 3, there's the phone, isn't there, that Woody makes friends with in the daycare. Now, my, the headcanon is that kids come in during the day and they nick the phone and take it home. And these are the same kids that are in Skin and Marink, who also have that phone, which is the, one of the creepiest like bits of imagery in a horror film ever. Like, if you see it, I'm so sorry. But my headcanon is that they, they took the phone from the daycare... And it was sort of possessed already, and it basically fucked up the kids um, in Skinner Marink. I mean, it's a talking wow. toy, so yeah, it makes sense that it is. Yeah, that that too, which makes sense why its eyes move as well, which exactly. is also disturbing. What, what do we think? Fun. That's um. I that mean, is wait, 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 wait to make that really sad, sad kids movie. Even sadder. I think I might I, have to I, watch I, Skin and Marink to agree with this. No, I cannot go back and watch Toy Story Three because that phone still freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's genuinely terrifying. I had a, it's a sleepless night over that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, that that's a that's another fun one. See, these are fun, like different genres. Oh my like, god, this fucking Wi Fi! Oh, why oh I have a really working? sad one that's gonna make everyone cry. Yay! Shoot. So you guys know Bridge to Terabithia? <laughs> oh no! Ter- oh, no. 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 <laughs> so I think <laughs> I think that you should start off watching the Bridge to Terabithia because. It's a really sad film, and it's a story about, obviously everyone knows it, these two kids that come up with this fantasy land to escape the trauma of real life, and one of them dies, and it's like a really, it's a, it's, it's, it's a horrid film. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I think that you should watch The Spiderwick Chronicles, which is a really <laughs> underrated film. Um, the books are even better, but the film is incredible as well. It's it's one of those rare times where the film is a good adaptation, um, where you know these twin brothers move into the Spiderwick estate and they discover that there's magical creatures all around the house, and it's basically them figuring out what to do. So it's two really good films about children in magical worlds. Um, with darker, darker endings, because the Spiderwick Chronicles does have a quite a dark ending as well. Uh, so yeah, that's those two. It's if you want to cry, good. do that. <laughs> Spiderwick Chronicles is so underrated. It really, really is. The books as well are so amazing. And is that the so one with the good more. doctor in, or is oh, that yeah. a different film? Pardon? 
Is that the yeah. one with the good? No, it's it's, it's 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 the, it's got the good doctor. Charlie in the chocolate. Factory. Yes, yeah, he plays the kid. The surgeon plays the children. <laughs> Sorry. Not Doctor not Doctor Han. No. No, no Doctor no. Han's a really child. <laughs> <laughs> um that's a that's another fun one. Like kids' movies that are like actually darker than you think. Well, I mean, yeah, one of them has got the death of a child in it. Yeah, no, but like Bridge to Zerabithia, when I when it came out, I was like sick, another like fantasy movie, I'm all in, and then I watched it and like I'm like I'm well I'm broken now. Yeah, no, <laughs> Why, it's why'd you do that? <laughs> Why'd you do that? Um, I've got... Okay, so I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do two now. One of them Ooh. is is one I did see on the internet. It's the only one I saw on the internet that is on my list. Shame. Because uh, I wanted to get some imp- inspiration. And this one was just too good not to mention. So it's, it's actually a triple bill. So it's also cheating. Um, it follows Matt Damon mm. with... Goodwill Hunting, through to The Martian, through to Interstellar. So ah, Goodwill Hunting, is I like a, it. Is a story about a genius um, teenager played by Matt Damon who never really sees his potential, learns his potential through therapy with Robin Williams and friendship with Ben Affleck, and he drives away at the end to uh, in search of a new life, leaning into The Martian. He is now, he becomes an astronaut, flies to Mars, um, and gets stuck there. Has to learn to live there on his own for about a year. Um, And at the end, he's finally saved, heroically, comes back to Earth, and is regarded as a hero. And so, the people of Earth are like, you know what, we're about to start interstellar travel. Who better than to send out there first than the man who can literally survive on Mars? So they send Matt Damon up to be the first man to uh, check out this other planet through interstellar travel and then when he gets there he's he's ptsd from his time on mars starts to come back he loses it so then when he goes under they find him in interstellar he's like you know fuck all this i'm gonna kill you guys that's really sad though because like he was like a good person in the martian and then you see him like a completely different person in interstellar like you, it's a, it's a it's a a, a close up look at the the de devolution of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Very clever. I like it. I I thought that was a fun one. Again, not my own. It was on the internet. So it's kind of My other one, I'm going to mention now, is um, a double feature of genres, and it's a very specific subgenre. I might have mentioned it on the show already. Um, it is cannibal coming of age movies. Are you going to mention Lord of the Flies? No, I'm going to mention Raw Rawr. and Bones and All. I don't know either of those. Neither is that the Shalaman Shal- Shal- so, Bing Bong? Um, no. So Raw is a French film um, that follows a woman, a, a girl going to university for the first time. Um, she wants to become a veterinarian, um, and she is a vegetarian, so doesn't eat meat. Has never eaten meat in her life. When she gets there, she accidentally eats meat, and gets really into it. So much into it, in fact, that she becomes a cannibal. Um, it's a jump. And I, it's, a, it's a really, really great movie. Very disturbing. Very scary. Good watch. You should check it out with some great music as well. Um, and. The other film is Bones and All. It came out last year. Um, it's directed by Lucas Gucudinia. Go did um, Call Me by Your Name. Oh. And Suspiria. Well, that hasn't that got a cannibal in it? Call Me by Your Name. <laughs> yes, but the act, not not the character, just the actor. Just the actor, yeah. Um, actual. Cannibal There's your double Army bill. There's your double bill. There is your double bill. That I should have thought of that. Fuck. <laughs> um. So, Bones and All follows Timothy Chalamet and... Yeah, Shyamalan Bing Bong. Oh, no! I... Oh, yeah, it is Shyamalan Ding Dong. Not... Bing not Bong. Bing Bong. Shyamalan Ding Dong. Bing Bong. Bing Bong, not Ding Dong. Apologies. Bing Bong, Bing and, uh, Bong. Oh, it's, it's Taylor Russell. Taylor Russell. Um, and they are two people who are trying to find themselves and each other um, and in a world that has cannibals in it. 
and they can sort of both movies have this idea that cannibals can kind of sense each other and um, <laughs> so, so they can sort of they have like a, a hunger and they're never like able to be that hunger is never quenched until they feed on someone and they can sort of try and live a while without it but this hunger just keeps coming back and coming back um and i think i think watching both of them will i mean sort of one almost glorifies cannibalism like what like raw is almost like yo this shit's so fire look at what this girl does now oh my, oh my god word. this shit's so good you should try this 100 percent. and bones and ollie's more like a yeah, maybe maybe don't like you know you might meet someone that's really nice but everyone else is kind of weird and they eat people that's not great um and it's all, in both films it's seen as like a sickness which is really interesting as well um so yeah both uh one's slightly more romantic than the other but i think both are worth a watch and watching them together could um so you could see some similarities could be i like that that's really good that's very good I would never watch um, it, but, you know, it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do um, scary I, stuff, so... How many more does everyone have? I've got I'm two. out. Five. <laughs> well, we, I don't have three all of them. I, I'm no more. Joe, do you want to hit us with a couple of yours? Yeah, so... Uh, I'll, I'll do, like, a few, and I'll briefly go through them. Uh, so the first do is it. Toy Story and Chucky. It's both about these dolls and toys coming to life. Um, it could be under the same sort of ruse, but like Toy Story ones sort of came out better than, you know, they're not evil, um, although I hope they're not. Um, so there's that one. Have you seen the original Child's Play, Chucky? Mm-hmm. So, like, I think it's, I mean, it's about, like, you know, the serial killer puts it in so i think it could be fun if like woody's possessed by like an old cowboy <laughs> yeah and B- buzz Lightyear is obsessed uh, is possessed by like some uh racist buzz kid that thinks he's an astronaut or that um you know that kind of thing and they're <gasps> yo, all possessed by it's like me if it was a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're rex I'm rex bro <laughs> Um, I don't want to use my head! For the, for the yes. promotion of, I think, for the new Charles Play film, they, it was like a picture of Woody. I can't remember the specifics of it, but they combined the two, so there's also that link. <laughs> uh, right, should I, hate, should I hate you with another one? Go on, do it. Um, hmm, okay. Madagascar and Castaway. <laughs> um, both have the Bull Wilson. I think King Julian has one. I haven't seen Castaway, so like this, <laughs> this is based on like what I have seen. But both are on like Castaways. an island, and both have a ball. With oh, in that case, I could combine Madagascar Castaway and Alvin and the Chipmunks, Chipwrecked. Chipwrecked. Yeah, because no. all have the ball yes. on an island. Wilson. Perfect. Um, Use his name. Build. Respect Wilson. Alvin Wilson. <laughs> Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. You can combine them all. Um, so yeah, deserts and bulls with faces on connects this film. Um, and people getting stuck on an island. And people get stuck on an island. Yes. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, <laughs> Great. Do you, want, do you want another one or should we go with someone else? Siwan, do you want to hear us with one? Um, I have a head cannon, which I've thought of ever Fun. since I've seen one of these films and it kind of connects them so so do you know Goonies yes with Data played by Ki Hui yes can't say his last name um well basically it's Data in the Goonies is Ki's character in everything everywhere all at once as a kid so okay. the Alpha Universe version he's an inventor and everything which kind of ties in <laughs> with his character in The Goonies. So basically, I think my little headcanon basically is in everything all at every, every, everything everywhere all at once is the kid from The Goonies growing up. I like that. I think that, I like that's that. solid. Yeah. That's a solid one. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I didn't realise he was an inventor. I probably should listen more in movies. I think it's like um, a little throwaway line. Either that or I've, I hear things. But <laughs> it fits either way, I think. Because, you know. I see non-canon things. Yeah. Um, that's fun. That's fun. I like that one. Um, I have one. It is a thematic one. Well, and hey. genre one. It's The Cabin in the Woods. Sorry, Alex. This is horror again. This is going to be lost on you. And uh, <laughs> Final Girls. So, Cabin in the Woods, I'm, sh- I'm sure we've all seen a bad Alex. I've seen Cabin um, in the Woods. Movie about, like, the, it's a love letter to horror films and slasher films specifically, where these people are tricked into going to a cabin to appease some gods. Uh, but they don't know that, and it's treated like a really basic um, by the books horror film until about halfway through when you realise something's going on really really great commentary on horror and the tropes of a slasher film the final girls it, the coming of the woods very meta final girls also very meta <laughs> final girls the fi- <laughs> see that's the so final softly girls, no because I was burping the final girls <laughs> <laughs> the final girls uh, the women. final girls. Fuck up. The <laughs> final girls is about a group of teenagers that get sucked into a horror film that um, one of the girls in the group, her mum, played the final girl in, and so it's another sort of meta look at horror films and slasher films of this sort of era, um, but also like has a lot of heart. Um, so I would recommend them both and watching them together could prove for a very fun filled meta horror evening I saw this advertised on Netflix I didn't watch it but I saw it advertised it's worth your time it is worth your time yeah it's good fun I like the bit where Chris Hemsworth's body is flung at the hologram wall. I think that's really funny <laughs> it's like it's somewhere, <laughs> somewhere out there has a CGI model with Chris Hemsworth like a low poly Just model tumbling <laughs> just something. Getting flapped. Getting flapped. Um, should we all just pick one more? Uh, yes. My last. Pick, look for your list. My, pick one more. My last one's a like a funny one. Go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a math equation here. Spy Kids three plus Shark Boy and the Lava Girl equals Ant Man Quantum Mania. So for a fun-filled afternoon, a triple header of those three masterpieces, enjoy. <laughs> Same CG levels. I, re- I remember um, yeah. Spike Kids 3 being really good. <laughs> Spike Kids 3 is class. Like, isn't it? <laughs> isn't, um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Eli- isn't Elijah Wood in it who, like, speaks <laughs> about, like... Elijah yeah. Wood! Yeah. He speaks yeah. about he cake and the then guy. he's crushed. He's a wee he baby. plays the guy, doesn't he? Is he the guy? <laughs> he's the guy, yeah. What does he say about cake in it? Because it's a meme, isn't it? Like, that, Eli- I don't know. Um, Elijah Wood uh, says the word cake and then gets crushed. <laughs> oh, yeah, he what says, means? like, it's gonna be a piece of cake or something like that, and then he gets, then like, he gets wiped the- out. <laughs> Um, I yeah no that's good but I'm not watching it my god again. Yeah, I but you good. get Eustace in Shockboy and Lava Girl. I did not. Several of the principals <laughs> of this have him expelled. Immediately. <laughs> oh, he that. was a little cretin. Yeah. Let's see one. Um, I went for my my final one is gonna be. It's a double feature, John Carpenter. One I mentioned earlier. Oh. Um, it's They Live and Big Trouble in Little China. So, for obvious reasons, two John Carpenter movies. But I also really like the genre of movie where a character stumbles upon something. They're so out of their depth. They have no idea how to react with these situations because they're so outlandish and crazy that they just sort of go along with it and the plot gets larger and larger and larger until it all bubbles over at the end. Nice. Um, Joe? Does Little Trouble in Big China have uh, an alleyway scene, though? Like a really long... Um, big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> That's what I said, wasn't it? No, 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 you said Little Trouble in Big China. Oh, oh sorry. 
In does Big Trouble in Little China though have a an alleyway <laughs> fight that goes on for <laughs> way too that. long? It does not. No, nothing will ever top. That is, the I hate that bit of the live. film. I hate that bit. What do you mean you hate it? It it's goes excellent. on so long. They're like, oh, it's done. No, no, no. It's like <laughs> it is nearly like ten minutes long. The fight scene. You could cut. Live, you could. You can cut wonderful. that down to thirty seconds. <laughs> Who edited that? No. Shame on you. Absolutely not. It's so good. Um, it's the best part of the movie. Hundred <laughs> percent. The credits, were um, good. but big, big trouble in the little channel. If you haven't seen it, it is an absolute romp. Kurt Russell at the height of his powers, and it's just honestly the best part of these movies is the fact that both protagonists get into these weird situations. They have no idea what's going on, so they just start shooting people. Mm. It's fantastic. Good. No notes at all. Um, yeah, I would, I would say that. I like that. Pretty good. Pretty good. Joe, do you want to hit us with the final one for the day? Yes, I've got a choice of two, so I'm going to... Hmm. Oh, it's a tricky one. Because one makes sense, and once it, one is just like... Oh, they're both about blah, blah, blah. Pick the one that makes sense. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go with 65, the uh, dinosaur movie with Adam Driver, and then Ice Age, because uh, they are in chronological order. Nice. Oh, do you want me to explain? Okay. So <laughs> Yes, please. Um, basically, uh sixty nine you have the sixty nine sixty nine Man's got some on the brain, you know. Sixty five you have Adam Driver on what is discovered to be Earth, and you've got the big old asteroid coming down that's gonna Is it asteroid or meteorite? One of the two. I don't know science. One of them comes down, destroys the dinosaur, Adam Driver gets away, whoop de doo But what happens from there? Well, watch Ice Age, and you get a, a perfect encapsulation of what it was like to live back then. Mm -hmm. um, you could even watch Ice Age 2 and Ice Age 3, um, because that, that brings back the dinosaurs. There's a link to that. You think they died in 65? No, they return in the fourth installment of the, th of the thing in Ice Age 3. Thank you, Joe. That's okay. That was wonderful, Joe. Thank you so much. Good one much. to end on, yeah? <laughs> that was a good one. A rock solid, mate. No notes. Yay. Um, <laughs> that was really fun. If you guys um, have any other double features that you like to watch or something interesting that we might have missed, um, send us a message on either Facebook or Instagram or um, put a comment on the Spotify because that, that works now. Um, I know because Joe keeps doing it. Um, huh? So... <laughs> so yeah let, let us know if you have any and we can uh, we can talk about them in the next podcast absolutely for now though does anyone want to quickly sell me a movie or a tv show or a game or a music or a book if you're a nerd see one go on okay so mine is a tv show which is sort of ending soon so that's kind of depressing but it's specifically last week's episode that kind of um made it something that i want to talk about it was a really good episode about a bus that, um... <laughs> oh, he's... Joe's leaving. He's, Joe, he's Joe's gone. Leaving. You've, um... lost, you've lost the room. You've lost the room. <laughs> but yeah, a really good episode about a bus. About two guys um, bringing back the old sitcoms. Yeah, but no. In actuality, I do actually want to suggest Inside Number 9. Because, um... I actually I'm rewatching it all with Joe, um, and it's actually really fucking good. So inside number nine. I I'm really happy that it's just said that because it's such a good show. Um, Especially with the buses. And race. And buses. You you torment me. It hurts, but I live through the pain because it's such a good show. And race. And race. <laughs> Joe, do you want to wear? Uh... I, no, I say something anti Wales for this one. Or... <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I, I I'm not gonna stoop to that <laughs> level. I'm not a fool of a took. So I came into this. Um, we, I was gonna say one movie, but now I. I, f I don't know. I've got two movies again. I can't choose. Can I can I do both of them? Um. Okay. Okay. Number them in your head right now. Okay. Two. Okay. The whale. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, do you want me to go for the other one? You can do the whale. Are you sure? No, it's just because I said something yeah. anti whales and you said the whale. I didn't even know. I had that down on my <laughs> on my word document before you said that. It was that. just funny. It was a funny kawinky dink joke. It's a kawinky dink. And also, it looks like Alex is holding a whale yeah. or an aquatic creature. Oh, he stretches. It's a fish. It's a oh, shark. It's an aquatic creature, Zan. Um, it's Bruce. Bruce. Um, Bruce. So I watched The Whale because uh, I kept seeing this gif of him floating. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I need to see the context of this. Um, so I watched it, and it's Brendan Fraser acting his heart out. Um, like, it's he, he's, he plays such a believable character who is is tormenting himself um after the death of his husband um that's the premise of the film and it's just it the film the whole film just follows him and his descent and like you know he i, I don't want to spoil too much but it's a it's a very good film it's he brendan fraser deserves all the awards that he received and um i haven't mentioned soundtracks in a while the final track of this film is beautiful. Like I've had it on loop. I play it as I'm about to get into bed. Um, it's it's just such a beautiful track uh, played by violins by Rob Sim Simonson. I think that's his name. He did the Ghostbusters Afterlife soundtrack, but he also did the orchestral bit of music at the end of Stranger Things series four, which hasn't had an official release yet, but he has posted it on YouTube. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really good film with a great soundtrack and Brendan Fraser is amazing um fair warning sadie sink is a bitch in this film but well acted bitch so well done on that but it's a very good film i think you should check it out i saw this and i think i did a um sell me a movie on it a while ago oh but like sorry. it no 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 it's fine it's fine it's good to have other opinions joe uh because i i think brennan fraser is excellent all the performances are excellent but the movie just feels like it's it's too acty. You know what I mean? It's just it's like really pushing for the Oscars, and it just sort of felt like, you know, yeah, we're doing huge performances. I didn't, I don't feel like we really had anything to say. It, it was like, originally a um a stage show, wasn't it? The, the, it the was, Tale yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Whale. Tale of the Whale. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's um, I and for that reason, that's why it's so confined. But for I think that also hinders it because if if all you've got is acting, then it becomes so obvious that you've got nowhere else to really go with it. And that, for me, sort of hinders the movie. And also, I will never watch it again because there are some, there are some really yeah. violent scenes in it that I can't unsee. To the point where I was sat in the cinema and I nearly... I nearly got up and left because I just can't handle that sort of stuff. There, there are some bits where you just don't want to look at it. Like there's the shot after the title, which is I didn't expect, and then there's a scene later on when he comes in, comes back in, and does some stuff. If you know yeah, what I'm like, about, he goes through a couple of binges. Yeah, th those scenes are the the hardest to watch. Yeah, uh, but and it, that's what I don't like. But it ends in such a triumphant an uplifting ending it's it's such a lovely note to the film and again the the soundtrack helps that it, yeah it does it does um that's a good recommendation though though joe i'm i'm glad you saw a movie and liked it thank you anyone else yes alex alex yes alex what alex hello do you want to sell me a movie it's actually or a, a tv game. show or a game or a music or a book if you're a nerd. It's a video game, because I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, so I'm going to sell the video game Far Cry 5. Okay. Because, you know, I know we're on Far Cry 6 now, um, which is still a really good game, but Far Cry 5, I think, is going to go down in history as probably one of the best Far Cries, next to Far Cry 3, um, if anyone's played that as well. Just because, you know, you're set in the US of A in Hope County and you're having to fight this horrendous cult which is kidnapping people, torturing people. Um, the, the, the game has such attention to detail 
and it is just so incredibly fun. It's such a fun game. I play it with my friend Anthony, who everyone here knows, and how... Oh, he's a character. He's a... <laughs> Anthony's a character. P- putting it lightly. Yeah, I love him. But, like, I play it with him, and it's... It, it, it's it got one of the best stories, I think. The characters are so deep. You, you'll fall in love with them. I've played it, I think, 76 times now to completion. Like, 100% it. I've 100% it this game 67 times. I'm, I'm on my 60, 67th playthrough right now. Um, is, is it the one with... Giancarlo, Giancarlo Esposito. Esposito. No, that's I, I was waiting the whole time to ask that. You beat me to it, Xander. Oh. No, that's number six. And that game is really good. <laughs> um, but Far Cry 5 is, is really good as well. Um, it's, yeah. If you're looking for like a fun, shooty game, it's great. If you're looking for a really in-depth kind of um, cult game, because I'm obsessed with cults, it's perfect for that as well. Um, cool. And it has a drug in the game called The Bliss, which I am very close to recreating. But that will oh. be for a later episode. Um, Maybe a filming podcast after hours. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely don't know our location episode. No. Um, I'm terrible at video games, but I will try and. I've seen you play zombies. I play zombies. Yeah, you're good at that. It. It's very routine. You're, based. Good, you're good at G mods, Ender. <laughs> no, he's not. Really not. I'm terrible at G mods. <laughs> Um, I'm going to recommend you guys a movie. Um, I'm going to recommend two of you a movie because, sorry, it's another uh, horror film. But um, this is I recommended a movie a couple of weeks ago called Infinity Pool, which was Brandon Cronenberg's uh, sophomore movie, and I saw his first movie, his debut this week, called Possessor. Which um, there are actually, if you get it on Blu-ray or see it online, there are there is actually a cut version of it in America, and you can only get the uncut version here, so it's released as Possessor Uncut. The movie is just called Possessor, though. Confused me a little bit. Um, it follows a. It's set in like a alternate present day, where we have this organization that um, are assassins and to take people out they take over someone's body through this machine um they don't really say how it works because like you know you just sort of buy into this world and how this all works um and it follows a specific assassin andrea riseborough who's sort of struggling to reach her full potential because um she's still got attachments with her family and so when she goes into this job um, she takes over this body and things get a little bit fucky. It's very cool, very stylistic. Um, the violence is well spread out, but when it happens, fuck me, it is brutal and unrelenting. Uh, there is a scene specifically that I... I'm still thinking about right now that I'm like, ah, that is, ah, oh, ah, um, it makes me feel real icky. Um, I would recommend this. I, th- I think it's, it's really, really good. It's also very upsetting. Like, don't come into this thinking you're going to have a good time because it's going to make you sad. Um, but it is worth your time again. Really fun one. Possessor, Brandon Cronenberg, I'm dead set on seeing whatever he does next. Ooh. There you go. Nice. I might watch that was that. a podcast. Okay. Didn't you say you had two, we did a two recommendations? Two. You said you had two, didn't you? Oh, the other one was They Live. Ah, uh, okay. I watched, but I mentioned it earlier twice actually. Woo-hoo. Um, that will do it this week. Thank you so much for everyone for listening. If you want to check out more episodes, go back through Spotify. We've got so many to choose from. Many, many, many. Um. With many different guests as well. Yeah. Many different co-hosts. Um, but you can also check out all the posters that Joe does on the uh, Instagram and Facebook. I've got no idea what to and do for this one. Me neither. <laughs> It'll be good, though. I'm sure. <laughs> the fingers um, 
thank you so much to you guys for for, for coming on siwan where can when can the people find you uh you can find me on instagram and twitter but i don't really post much at c wine and i review films quite often on letterbox at c o's fantastic thank you and uh, alex people can't find you anywhere do you want to say anything to anyone yeah you'll never find my riddler fan account <laughs> Okay, um, Joe. Uh, you hello. Can, hello. Hey, babe. Hello. Are you all right? <laughs> I'll take all. Lou. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Cook Eleven Joseph, because uh, that's my name and a random number. Um, mm. Where I tweet on on Twitter. I know, revolutionary. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Rebel Hoovian. Um, and then you can find me. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at uh joe cook underscore digital artist where i released a poster today or at time of recording this so go check that out it's of love and monsters one of the best doc two episodes shut up shut up asander shut up he didn't even say anything oh but his face did it's ice cream time yeah this mic is probably gonna <laughs> The, the, my mic is probably gonna pick up an ice cream truck in the background no we can no, hear that's it. how yeah, i heard it see what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. Where can we find you, Zelda? Well, um, yeah, on the Instagram, the Facebook. If you want to find me on Instagram, you can do it. It's the real Xander LW, but that is completely up to you. I only post very sexy images of my beautiful self. Oh, well, now uh, you've got <laughs> to go see it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Next week, what was the plan next week? We had a plan. Marvel is tournament. it Spider? Oh, Marvel tournament is a marvel tournament are we wrapping up the marvel tournament next week oh, is it no i don't know i'm not actually sure I, th- I thought it was the marvel tournament is it spider because i know spider verse is after that okay. no joe we can't Spider-verse, record spider verse before it comes out <laughs> yeah, of course you we can, can. God, we can post our theories um, oh no that's sheets <laughs> i'm looking for calendar where's calendar calendar who's candace we're getting there guys Oh, wait, I did the joke. I meant it to say candid. Oh. I oh, my up. God. <laughs> no, it's not Morbius, is it? Morbius. No. <laughs> I just <laughs> remembered week, from your laugh. I am saying this now, so we have to do it. We are going to watch Morbius in preparation for Spider-Verse. What, How in cold? Is that Don't ask why. How what, is that cold? connected? Sony, Oh, man. wait, I can't record next week, so I didn't have to watch it. No. I've seen it once. I don't want to see it again. No, I remember. We will see you next you really week where it, you it were... will be. I en- it will be Morbin time. I enjoyed. You, you, were, you, were, t- topless you were messing Matt me Smith. throughout. Did I? Hmm. I don't. How, qu- well, how quickly they forget? Oh my god! This was a year if you ago. See, if I you want to see our our uh, hilarious commentary on that, make sure you are tuned in next week. Until then, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye, Derek. Oh, you guys are so angry. I love it.